Uh, do you have any puzzles for us before we head out? We might actually be saying goodbye to this village. I'm not sure if we ever return here, but if we don't, then any puzzles that are exclusive to this area will be lost. But don't worry about it. Granny Riddleton will be sure to pick up our slack if we missed anything. Um, this might be a good opportunity to just walk through the entire village. Uh, who are you waiting for? It's none of your business. We haven't told the master about what we're doing. Uh, maybe he's one of the servants who's trying to get the Mr. Anderson's daughter out of here. Uh, and he disappears. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have just skipped through all of that. Uh, what do we go over here first? I'm going to go to all the areas real quick before... Yep, one puzzle we would have missed. Oh, hey there. I've got another board problem on my hands. Here's the shape I'm going for this time. Puzzle number 43, board splitter 2. Well, here we have yet another inconveniently shaped board. This one's even more unwieldy than the last, so you need to cut it into two pieces that you could reassemble to form a rectangle. Assuming you aren't allowed to flip either of the pieces over once the board is cut, where should you cut it in order to achieve the above? Hint number one. Just like in the first board splitting puzzle, you need to cut the board in two places and make a second piece. Don't forget, since you'll be combining these two pieces into a single rectangle, you need to make sure all of the little gaps and protrusions in your two boards fit together snugly. Hit number two. After you make your cuts, you won't need to rotate either piece to make the first make them fit together as a rectangle. Hit number three. When cut properly, the two boards both have a maximum length of four units. To make a piece with that length, try cutting the board below the fourth square down from the upper left corner. You'll need to make one more cut, but we'll leave you to find that one. The solution is right here and right here. That's correct. Just making sure we're good. Consider this puzzle solved. Good old smiling Layton. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Very nice. That was pretty fun. Okay, if you say so, puzzle. I am having fun though. Hope you guys are too. You really are something else. Something amazing. I thought I'd have to scrap this board, but now I could use it to build my shed. Got a new bat- and he just throws another battery piece at us. Or camera piece, rather. Uh, is the lady back in here? Yes, she is, and she has a puzzle for us. Good thing we checked before we left. Oh dear, I forgot to get apples for tonight's meal. Uh, say, that reminds me of a puzzle- the burp reminds you of a puzzle? Okay. Puzzle number 31. Pass the apples. It'd be funny if it actually involved burping in some way. No, this game's too gentlemanly to have such a monstrosity of a notion. Johnny and Thomas are each carrying some apples. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. Conversely, if Thomas gave Johnny two apples, Johnny would have the three times the number of apples that Thomas would have. So just how many apples is each man holding? Hint number one. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. A little critical thinking applied to the above statement tells you that Johnny must have two apples more than Thomas. Hint number two. If Thomas gave Johnny two apples, Johnny would have three times the number of apples that Thomas would have. You know from the hint one that the original difference in apples between Johnny and Thomas is two. In the above scenario, the gap increases by four to six. We now know that when Thomas loses two apples, Johnny has six more than him, which is also three times more. Hint number three. Can you think of a number where the result is the same if you add it to the six or multiply it by three? That number is how many apples Thomas has after giving too many, or two away. So if we add those two back, Thomas has... My head hurts. Uh, the answer is that Johnny is holding seven apples and Thomas is holding five. Both seem like kind of outrageous numbers to actually be able to hold comfortably, but I'm just gonna do what the guy tells me to do. Huh. Wonderful. Nice. Johnny has seven apples and Thomas has five. As you can tell, if Johnny gave Thomas one apple, both men would have six apples. Additionally, Thomas decided to give Johnny two apples. Like, the thing with these puzzles is that, like, the reason math is so difficult for me is like whatever the topic at hand is, it's always like they repeat the word so many stinking times like apple, 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 apple. It's so stinking like confusing at times. That's the answer, all right. So where will you be heading next, Professor Layton? Once our train is working is in working order, we'll move on to the next town. Oh, then I expect you'll run into the young mistress. She's leaving on the Molentary Express today. Should you bump into her, do say hello. 
Oh, and remember, please keep Miss Ka Miss Katia's trip a secret from the master. Will do, unless we don't. Let's go ahead and just check around a little bit more to see if we got any more puzzles. Not from this guy, he's still sleeping probably. I'm gonna go this way. Uh, you got anything for us? No, you do not. And I guess we're just gonna head back. So I finally got around to playing Spider-Man PS4. It is really sinking fun, but also really sinking confusing. Like I really gotta get used to those types of games. I wish that like I want to play on the easiest difficulty, but if you do that, you're not allowed to do quick time events or button mashing segments, which is really lame. That's like the easiest part of the game. So I don't know why they do that. I kind of just wish they made the game easier. Uh and like didn't change that part about it but whatever i guess it's just like it takes away the fun for me if i decide to play on the easiest difficulty i guess it's like a punishment or something the place is positively crawling with people isn't it careful flora if you don't watch where you're going you're likely to run into someone oops sorry this is all so new to me that i forgot to pay attention to where i was walking understandable after all it's quite a change of pace from london Wow, Flora, you sure are excited. Just don't stand around gawking for too long or we might accidentally leave you behind. Wow, what's that? Ooh, and look, there's another one over there. Huh? Professor? Luke? Where did you two go? Oh no! Professor, Flora's gone! Oh dear, we must have gotten separated in the crowd back there. Let's retrace our steps. It's going to be awfully hard to find her with all these people about. Now, where could that girl have gone off to? Well, Flora, where did you run off to? Sorry, there were so many people that I must have lost you. I turned to look at you for something, and before I knew it, you two were gone. Well, I'm relieved you found your way, your way back to us. With so many people around, who knows when we might have found you again. I'll be more careful from now on, I promise. Hey, you know, I caught wind of something very interesting when I was wandering around back there. Oh, what did you hear? That a man named Romy was asking around after the Elysian box. If we could track him down, maybe he could tell us something we don't know. I heard from one person that he's been wandering about near the station. That is interesting news. Let's head to the station and see if we can find Romy. Way to go, Flora. That's some top-notch intelligence you gathered around here. Hee hee hee. Aw, it was nothing. The Professor Logan and Lauren is at Logan and is Too bad she's at the station and not the park. Okay, that's horrible. <laughs> that was actually kind of a clever pun. I gotta I got be proud of that one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Gosh, I just can't decide. Oh, hi there. Do you um, need something or something? We are currently in search of an item known as the Elysium Box. Does that name ring any bells? The Elysium Box? Nope, never heard of it. But I do know of a great puzzle about a box. Check it out. <laughs> That's like, if you talk to someone like, hey, do you have like $5? No, but I know a puzzle about $5. Like, that doesn't help. I need to get $5, like, right now. I don't know. Puzzle number 46, Odd Shape Out. You have a box as shown below. Using the white cubes as standard units, the box is two cubes wide by three cubes long by two cubes tall. Two white cubes are permanently attached to the floor of the box. Now, of the four shapes A through D shown below, three of them can be placed together in the box to fill it to be the top with no gaps. Find the shape that doesn't fit into the box using the, the conditions described above and circle the corresponding letter. It's like a Tetris! Hint number one, consider each of the two layers of cubes separately. And number two, did you notice that shape C fits perfectly into the space available in the bottom layer of the box? And number three, if you read hint two, all you have to do, all you have left to do is find shapes that fill the remaining two by three cube space on the upper layer. The solution is that the D shape does not fit into this equation, or into this box, rather. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Sharp thinking. No, that's not pun. It's just like mixing it up from great job or something like that. Holy moly, you must be some kind of puzzle genius. Also, how convenient that 
a girl named Lulu gave us a puzzle about a box, because my Lulu loves sitting in boxes. All right, what did you guys want to know again? I was wondering if you might know anything about the Elysium box. Let's see, let's see. Nope, I've got no clue at all. If I were you, I'd try asking someone else. I see. Got that taken care of. Uh, we might want to end this episode off. I was hoping we would finish the entirety of this town before we left or whatever. Uh, before we finish the episode, but I don't know if that's going to be the case. We've got so many characters. Yeah, I was afraid to click on him. I was like, he's going to have a puzzle. Uh, I guess we could just have a long episode today. I must admit I was skeptical at first, but you really know how to communicate with those cows. Everyone's been busting their buns, their hamburger buns, to get Dropstone ready for today's festivities. Yep, everyone's been working like crazy. See that flag over there? Made yesterday. Help put it up. When I worked, I thought of a puzzle. You want to hear it, right? You want to hear my puzzle, don't you? Puzzle number 54, painting the flag. You have a pristine white flag that you want to color into three sections as shown. You have three paints. No two adjacent sections of the flag could be the same color. Each section can be only one color, and you can't change the number or size of these sections. If you aren't allowed to mix paint, how many distinct flag designs are possible? Hint number one. You have three paints you could use on the flag, but that doesn't mean those are the only colors at your disposal. Hint number two. Maybe you've noticed that the white color of the flag's fabric is another color you could use in making your designs. Hint number three. Adding white to the three paints you have give you have gives you four colors you could use to make your flag designs. If the leftmost third of your flag is white, you have a total of nine distinct designs. Math! The solution is there are 36 possible different designs you can make on this flag. Just leave it to me. Mate's apprentice strikes again. Sharp thinking. Hey, you used the same thing twice. Now it's getting repetitive in a whole different way. Pretty good, right? I may be getting older, but I could still cook up a mean puzzle. I think I love how people talk about puzzles in this universe. Like, oh, I love the smell of puzzles in the morning. Uh, how's your festival treating you? Make sure to enjoy it while you can, eh? Truth is, like, be out there whooping it up with you, but I got packages to deliver. Next stop is, isn't far from here. If I give you a few hints, I bet you can figure out where it is. Okay, let's get it done. Puzzle number 35, which house where? Below are houses A, B, C, and D, each of which is a different color. Decipher each house's color from the following clues. The red house is closer to the pine tree than your blue house. The yellow house is closer to the lake than the green house. The green house is closer to the power lines than the blue house. And D is either yellow, blue, or green. Change the color of each house by tapping on it with your stylus. Hint number one. If you read clues one through four and are still stuck, try starting from clue four and working your way backward. Hint number two. The red house is closer to the tree than the green house. In number three, house C is red. Just giving it to you straight up like that. Okay. Uh, A is green, B is uh, blue, C is red, and D is yellow. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. That's right. And we're back to the that's right. Yep, that's the house. Now I'd better get moving. No rest for the mail carrier and all that. Okay, I'll just sort of speed through here so we don't make the video too terribly long, even though we just hit the 40 minute mark. Uh, we already went up, right? Yes, we did that. And then to the right, there was... Uh, God darn it, another stinking puzzle. I really shouldn't have done this. Maybe I'll split the episodes, I don't know. Oh, hello there, you two. You sure have excellent timing. I see I'm trying to wrap these flowers I grew to give to a friend. I got the green thumb when it comes to these plants, but I'm all thumbs when it comes to wrapping. Help an old gal out, won't ya? Did I do that in the first late NLP? Did I, like, do a long recording and then split it in half? I don't remember if I did. Maybe I'll have a cliffhanger for right when Flora gets kidnapped and everyone will get mad at me for it. But, uh, puzzle number 32, it's a wrap. What the fruit, Lou? Lou's like, how dare you don't have any more puzzles about me? I'm the main, most important character in this franchise. Oh, Louie, you can't miss I said your name. 
In order to wrap the flower just like the leftmost drawing, how should you begin your wrapping? Tap A, B, C, or D to answer. Multiple choice and short explanation. Hint number one, pay attention to the direction and starting point of each diagrammed fold. Hint number two, since the green edge on the wrapping paper will be obscured as you roll up the paper in A and D, you can throw out both of these answers. Hint number three, you're left with only two options at this point, so focus on the direction of the wrapping and you'll soon find the solution. And the solution is C. And now to test my theory. I never get tired of hearing you say that. It's just like, and now to test my theory. Two gentlemen leaves no puzzle unsolved. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's about the finest wrapping job I've ever seen. You sure saved me a heap of trouble. And we got a hamster toy. Goody good. It's like goody gee, I don't know. Now, let me return the favor with a few helpful tidbits about the tea set I gave you. I'm sure you know the basics of brewing, yes? Putting on one scoop of me is the three ingredients I gave you to make the lovely Bell Classic Tea. However, there's a lot of room for experimenting. For example, try brewing two parts brisk berry and one part something else. Get it right, and you'll make a sweet, crisp tea that is just wonderful. And if you happen to pick up more tea ingredients, try clearing, uh, creating some infusions of your own. There's a whole world of complex flavors waiting to be discovered. You just need to find them. They really do treat tea and puzzles in this game like Pokemon. It's thinking weird. Um, I think we're done here, so we can go this way. And then we could go southward, finally. Uh, we got one more puzzle on the way. This is probably going to get split into two parts, so let's take it slow for a little bit. It's Madeline! It's Madeline! She really let herself go after her TV show got cancelled. This whole festival is being put on by the Andersons, the wealthiest family in the village. As you're new here, let me dish you for a moment. Have you seen their place as at the north end of town? It just turns your eyes with green with envy, hmm? Well, Mr. Anderson has a young daughter who's been going, growing up to become quite a beautiful young lady. Yes, her name is Katya, and she's the unusual combination of beautiful and sweet. Plus, I hear she's very respectful toward her father, unlike most youngsters. Oh, kids these days, the only thing they love more than sass and their parents are those oversized pants. What? Oh, sorry, I do believe I've gone on a rant. Did you need something from me? Actually, yes. Tell me, madam. Have you ever heard of a rare antique known as the Elysium Box? Hmm. It's a new name for me, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't help you at all, so will you leave me alone now? Oh, but you know, you did just remind me of a gem of a puzzle. I know that concrete's- I know that can- I know that concerns a box! Jesus Christ. Puzzle number 40, the tiled box. The two boxes shown below are actually the same box shown from two different angles. Using the visible faces, reassemble the pattern of the box by placing the tiles into the unfolded view on the box. Don't forget, each tile needs to go in the correct square facing the correct direction. Hint number one. When you start, you only know the position and orientation of the spade. So suss out where the other tiles should go by examining the second of the two cube images. Hint number two. The yellow circle tile goes directly above the spade. Hint number three. The green club tile should be placed in the square above the yellow circle. The solution is putting the triangle here, uh, the heart will go right here and flip it upside down, club goes here, the circle goes here, and the person goes here, flip him upside down. I, I'm having like vague memories of turning the circle space upside down just to see if it would do anything and I actually got it wrong. That might be incorrect. I. Don't really want to test it out, though. Maybe I'll do it afterwards. Uh, I guess Teresa could tell you if it happened or not. Good job. Was it hard to convert the 3D shape of the box in the flat 2D image in your head? Uh, no, because I'm great at puzzles and totally not cheating. Well, hang in the laundry line and call me a bath mat. Well, that's a line. I never thought you'd solve that one. You seem like a nice man, so I'll be straight with you. I wouldn't talk to Ed about that box in these parts. But why? Well, it's complicated. I've given you my advice, so smarten up and follow it. So it seems like, I feel like everyone who said no to knowing about the box does know about it, and then they just don't want to say 
They don't want to mention it for whatever reason. Oh, Mr. Layton, do you have a moment? Certainly. How may I be of assistance? It seems you've done a great deal of investigating today. Tell me, during the course of your inquiries, you didn't hear anything about my daughter, did you? Your daughter, sir? Yes, Katia. You see, she hardly ever comes home since her grandmother, pa Sophia, passed away. Sophia and my daughter were very close, and Sophia's death came as a great shock to Katia. If you should see her, would you please tell her that her father wishes she'd come home? If a fine gentleman such as yourself delivers the message, she just might listen. Unfortunately, our train is leaving soon, so I may not be able to be much help at all. Katya is my, no, our only child. She means everything to me, and I'd be forever in your debt if you could help me. I wonder what this Katya lady is all about. Your guess is as good as mine. But judging by her family and breeding, I'd guess she's both beautiful and refined. Professor, get a hold of yourself! Okay, I don't know what that was all about, Luke, but whatever. Uh, this guy doesn't have anything for us. Have they even inquiring about the village? Uh, about the antique known as the Elysium Box. Is Layton supposed to be saying that line, or is that like a typo glitch thing? Oh yeah, that thing. Okay, apparently he was... Oh wait, no, it's Romy, yeah. Um, So... Uh, it was what Flora mentioned. Oh yeah, that thing. Folks say that freaky box kills whoever manages to pry its lid open. I just found out about it during the course of my travels, but that box isn't what I'm really after. Well then, if I may be so bold as to ask, what are you looking for, sir? A phantom town that's nowhere to be found on any map. A place only chosen, only the chosen may visit. The only way in, I hear, is on the Mullentary Express. The train and its many mysteries have been the subject of my research for years. From what I could tell, this artifact you're after, this Elysium box, is also tied to that town. Wow, so how so when could we set out for it? How do you how do we even get there? Yeah, that's the detail I haven't pinned down yet. Maybe you whisper a word while the train is inside and then whoosh! The track goes in a new direction. Anyhow, it's probably something like that. I'll just have to keep searching till I find a way in. Interesting. Thank you for your time. Professor, did you hear that? I think we finally got a new lead on the Elysium box. It's a bit early to celebrate, but it looks like our journey on the Mullentary Express isn't over yet. Alright, you two. Let's start making our way back to the station. Okay, Professor. Looks like we are finally done here. Say goodbye to Dropstone, everybody, because we are heading back on the road. Or I guess on the railroad. Yo, you got at least 30 puzzles under your belt. Nice going, bro. Wow, you wouldn't let us back on the train if we hadn't solved 30 puzzles. That's kind of funny. He's like, yeah, I know you got a ticket and all, but you're not allowed to go on this train anymore unless you're a puzzle-solving master. If you want a challenge worthy of a real rock star, give me a holla. Guess we're good to go. Let's get on the train in the next episode. Or should I click? I feel like I should just click on it now. Or I can't click on it now. Get trying to get back on the train. Hello? Why, why, why won't it let me go back on the train? I had to- what? I had to click on him twice? That makes no sense. How's that festival treating you, dudes? Pretty righteous, huh? The train isn't ready to move quite yet, so while you're waiting, I'll lay the sweet puzzle on you. Literally, he just lays it on us. Puzzle number 55, Sammy's Necklace. Uh, I guess just because the guide is warning me about it, I guess I'll warn you about it too. Even though I haven't been going for every single hint coin, uh, this should go without saying, but any hidden coins that are in areas we don't ever return to will be lost. They don't get stored somewhere like in Granny Realton's shack. They are just gone for good. So if you're going for all the hidden coins, make sure you scour Dropstone before heading out. Sammy has eight chains with seven links each. He wants to connect all these chains to make a totally awesome necklace that's a single loop. The jeweler says he could open and close a single link for $2. As shown below, Sammy could open... The an end of each of the eight chains to make one long necklace that's a single loop. However, that would cost $16, and the truth is that there's a cheaper way to get the same results. Using the cheapest method possible, how much will it cost to make Sammy's necklace? It's a very cool looking necklace. Hint number one, the number of links in each small chain is a crucial clue that will help you solve the puzzle. Hint number two, you haven't been opening only the links on the ends of each small chain, have you? 
Hint number three. Try looking, try taking one small chain, popping open each of its seven links, and using those individual open links to connect the other small chains together. Is the answer clear now? Uh, sure, the answer is as clear as day, because after all that deducting I just did, the answer is obviously... 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 14. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. Score! That's a good uh, tagline for his puzzle, I guess. The Monetary Express is back in business, baby! Get ready to ride, folks! Hey, you guys better hurry back to your seats, because this train is ready to rock! And oh, we missed three puzzles in Dropstone, apparently. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna have to go back there to uh, Granny Realton's shack so we can access puzzles number 41, 49, and 52. Hmm? Thank you so much. <sighs> hmm? What's going on over there? I believe we may have stumbled upon Mr. Anderson's dear daughter. That's one heck of a send-off. Considering the size of the party, I doubt she's just going on holiday. Katia. Katia is the daughter of Dropson's most influential man, Mr. Anderson, and has boarded the Molentary Express. Several villagers came to see her off, yet she travels alone. Where is Katia headed, and why is she making the journey there by herself? We may find this out next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. We're not going to find out next time because that would be way too short of a game. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.